Hi, welcome to Quirky Queen's Journals. My name's Kirsten. So today I am making little abstract art pieces using the gel plate and other media. This is an information booklet that I had gotten with a set of lights and that is some acetate and plastic folder stencils that I have made. Now, I um, made 46 of these little um, mini abstract art pieces um, from the, these booklets. So this is the jelly plate with acrylic paint and I am just doing lots and lots and lots and lots of layers um, using lots of colours and just having the most fun. Basically relaxing. I did this over three days and I absolutely loved it. Um, I have interspersed, is that a word? Interspersed pictures of the completed artworks throughout the video, just randomly. And then there's about 30 probably at the end. So basically a lot of it is... Um, like I said about making lots and lots and lots of layers. So a lot of the layers are basically by putting them on, you know, lots of the little pages on at the same time on the jelly plate. I'm creating these lovely sharp angles of colours. And I'm, I really like that. Um, and it means when I'm putting the layer over it, the, these, you know, these shapes will show through. The paper in this booklet as well, um, I mean, it was quite amazing how many layers it could take. I have also used pan pastels and Lindy's Starburst, Starburst sprays and Posca pens and high flow acrylics on these as well. So the video itself, it's not... Uh, I couldn't have shown you everything that I did, but I have shown you all the processes. Um, because at one point I did have like over 20 of those little pages on my tiny little jelly plate, just picking up, you know, like little squares of paint, little lines, getting some nice um, L shapes and even more like step shapes, just because of you know the corners in that that were created by the placement of the other pages try to remember what color oh this was the blue color turquoise blue that one turned out nice and that as well that's it, Alazirian Crimson and Turquoise Blue. They go really well together, I think, actually. So I really started this with kind of no expectations. I just, um, oh, you know, I was actually considering making a little booklet because my intention was to keep that information leaflet intact. So have it as a big kind of fold up patchwork but it, it was bit, it was very difficult to strategically place it on the jelly plate you know when it was together which is why I split it all up into the the little pages so the information leaflet had 12 and I have done each side so oh, that's love that's a pale olive green that's on that one as well so you can see there, there's some really bold shapes, but then there's also some more uh, whimsical, I suppose, you know, where, where it's a lot more lines rather than, rather than big bold shapes. And you can see the colours of the shapes, you know, that have gone before shining through the layers. So... Because I've used a mixture of opaques and transparent paints. So, basically, this was just about covering the pages. 
getting some interest in the pages. And then some of the pages after three or four layers, I felt like, you know, they look like they're ready to just get, you know, like the pan pastel or the Posca pen or whatever on them. And then other ones, you know, it took a lot more. And it's just the way it was. So it just naturally narrowed down the amount that I was doing each time. I love that big E type shape. So I do show you me using the pan pastels um, and what I thought was I wanted to use them to try and um, sort of mute some areas so that focal points were, you know, you could define a focal point because they weren't blurred out with the black or white or whatever pan pastel. But actually, the way that the pan pastels worked, it almost helped me create areas of dark and light, which was actually a really helpful thing. And next time I use them on top of the jelly prints, I want to think more strategically about where, in, where I'm placing them. Because putting in those shadows and lights with the pan pastels, actually, I felt helped kind of make a composition a wee bit more because with the jelly plate you're you are putting down you know it's a lot of um when you're just doing lots of layers here without overly thinking about how you're placing them things look really great and really interesting but adding in the pan pastels really did help bring in some values to it I suppose But once I learn how to use them more and I become more experienced with them, then I'll be able to, you know, hopefully create a range of values instead of just dark and light. Oh, I love that swirly one. And I love that cadmium yellow deep hue. So the swirly stencil and that yellow paint, marriage made in heaven. Lovely. So I found with the pan pastels, I was a bit heavy handed I have noticed that a lot of the little pictures where I have put down the black it is very dark so I need to be um I need more experience using them to be aware of how they handle and you know how much you need to use how much pressure all the rest of that and also how they behave on top of different mediums and you know, different colours, etc. So, because the white, I felt I needed to use more white to get the lightness, but less black to get the darkness. And also, once I've placed the dark, the black, once I put the white down, I'm not making, it does blend with the black, so therefore I'm making greys. But that means that I am going to be able to make different mid-tones, which is something that I, I do need to, work on a lot because I tend to be able to do dark light and somewhere in between. I haven't really, I need to do more research into mid-tones and also, you know, well, it's subtle changes, isn't it, that you need to make to, to be able to create your like pale greys and your darker greys, etc., I love this pale pink with that blue. That worked really well. It almost makes the stencils look like they've got a shadow under them. So I liked it at this stage because you could really see. You could, do you know, they were just so much more interesting to look at. And I absolutely loved the variety. I mean, doing this, this you would call this a mass make. You know when people do junk journals, they do mass makes. This is a jelly print mass make. But some of the designs are just fantastic. Do you know, I was really happy with these. I was worried. I was thinking, this is taking for ages. You know, like, and, um, and I'm thinking, am I just making a mess? But see, when they started coming together, honestly, I, I was so happy. And I like as well, some of them you can still see the writing shining through. It's maybe not so obvious on the video, but, you know, the 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 designs and the 
text that was on the paperwork originally as you know you still can see that coming through in some areas so i'm thinking it would be interesting to try and make some of these on a bigger scale and i'm thinking right now obviously the jelly prints are the biggest aspect of it but what there's nothing to stop me using bigger shapes on the bigger jelly plate and instead of having lots of shapes made at the same time that I pick up on the whole page, this time it would be, you know, you'd be putting down one shape with the jelly plate onto the big canvas or whatever and then you can do another shape in another area of the canvas. So, yeah, I think these are like... I think of them as like little thumbnail sketches. Now, people keep sketchbooks and I th was going to stick these into a sketchbook at one point. I thought, oh, I'll do that. But they're double-sided. And then I thought, right, I could put them into like an accordion style or, you know, into a notepad style or whatever, like make a book out of them. But I didn't want to lose the edges of them. I really like this one because this looked like it had a lot of shadows underneath the stencil shapes. My desk is such a mess. You don't even see, I mean, what you see there is, oh, it's the tip of the iceberg. It's because I had lots of paints out and lots of stencils out, it just took over and then all those little pages everywhere. I like that as well. Honestly, I was really happy with the majority of these. In fact, there should have been 48 and I ended up with 46. And I actually think it was through tearing it was the reason that it was just the 46 and not 48. Do you know, I really, I would like to do a longer video and show these, you know, more of the process of this maybe in a kind of real time but I'm not sure how watchable it would be so I'd be interested to know if anybody would be interested in seeing more of a real time video but it would be longer and there would be less going on overall because you would see a lot more of me putting down the paint, waiting for the paint to dry, etc. I'm going to spray this with the Lindy's Starburst, Starburst spray. I do think that they would be better on um, a less busy background. I'm thinking with the Posca pens as well that I... I think I should have made simpler shapes and less of them. I think that I made it too busy with the Posca pens. I do switch over to the narrower nib, but I still think the designs were too complex and I really should have kept it more just like a simple L shape or just, you know, a simple swirl like, like this. So I need to think more about about adding in the line work. Maybe I need, should use what, a fine liner in different colours rather than, you know, a fairly thick Posca pen. This design's very complex. I mean, this was silly. I just went a wee bit overboard here. And then what happens is, when I realise that my design's too complex and busy, I then try and add to it. <laughs> I can't be alone here. That 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 picture you just seen had a lot of layers. Oh, I like this design here that I make. This makes me think like of a king or a queen. I also, when I'm using the Posca pen and I am putting these designs down, I am going back in and doing more jelly plate printing on top of them 
you know, so that it does blend in more with the background and it becomes part of the picture, not just something on top of it. <laughs> now, remember I said earlier about having like 20 pages on the jelly plate? This is a prime example. <laughs> I think every page was on this. Which is why I've had to do a wide shot of it actually to show you. It is amazing seeing them all together on the video like this though. You don't get the same impact when you're sitting there with them. I'm actually really quite proud of these. And there was definitely less pressure because there was so many of them. I'm like, well, there'll definitely be one or two that definitely turn out nice because there's so many. So the pan pastels, oh, I'm still, I, I've only just gotten these a couple of days ago. So in some ways, they are better than the soft pastel sticks because they're blendable. You've got the wee sponge to put them down with. But then with the stick, I feel like hmm, you just use it in a different way. With the stick you put down, you know, you can put down the really sharp lines and then blend them out. But this just blends really well from the beginning. So it's, it's just a different way of using it. I suppose it's like the difference between acrylic paint and acrylic paint and a pen. So it's nice to have both, I would say. So you can see there how richly the black goes on. But yeah, they, they, are, they are lovely to use. They are lovely. I don't think my soft tools will last very long. And I think I'll be going to Primark or the pound shop to get makeup sponges to use rather than buying more soft tools. I'm very heavy handed, you see. Now see how thickly that black's went on? I really do need to use that very sparingly. But I do think used, you know, more strategically <laughs> and with less of a heavy hand, I do think that um, they really will enhance the jelly prints and really take them to a new level. I'm actually just getting darker and darker. I think that I need to stop topping up the sponge and use it as it is. It's like a wee production line. They were expensive, the pan pastels. However, I am hopeful that, you know, they're an investment and they will last for a long time. Oh, this is us at the end. I also think the pan pastels help add a bit of atmosphere to them, actually. Especially the dark one. Um, it helps to really add light to it as well, because darkening down some areas does make other areas look a lot brighter. So from that aspect, that I really like them. And also... When I put down the pan pastel, you know, I did go back over and do more jelly printing on top of some of them. So I hope you enjoyed that and I hope to see you soon and take care. And thanks very much for watching. And stay till the end. I like this one. Cheerio!